Frisky's bag um, we're gonna, by cutting it out slightly, and then we're going to go ahead and put this reflection on it as if it's sitting kind of on a white table. Pretty common, you see this under a lot of product usage in ads, posters, and stuff like that. I'm going to put this little teeny drop shadow to show that it might uh, have a little bit of weight to it. So I'm going to recreate this right here. So I'm going to the Frisky's image, which is not a very good picture. I'm going to dupe it before I do anything else by dragging this layer down onto the new icon. So I've got a background copy. I'm going to go image, go to canvas size. It's a little under four. I'm going to make this a little bit wider just so it's easier to work on. So it's just under four. I'm going to make the width be six. And I want to pretty much double the size of this. I don't really need quite that much, but close to it. So this is just under seven. So I'm going to make this 14. I'm going to click on this top button in the middle, and that's going to add equally on the sides here and here my extra kind of one inch. And then it's going to add all the extra space down here at the bottom. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to go back to edit canvas size, and I'm going to go ahead and add one more inch at the top by clicking this bottom button with these arrows pointing up, just again to have more space to work with. I'm going to hide the background. I am going to. Um, make a new layer. I'm going to click the foreground color over here, slide this thing up. I'm just going to pick some other color and I'm going to go up to edit, pull down to fill with the foreground color. This will just make it easier. Put this thing underneath this layer just so that I can be able to see this easier. Okay, I normally like building masks around things but just because we're going to do a couple other steps we're going to do this a little bit differently. So I'm going to go get the quick selection tool and I'm going to try to wrap around the whole bag. And then I'm going to hit the Q command to see how well that did. And I think it did pretty good except it didn't get this O. So I'm going to go back and rub across there, Q again. Yeah, it's fine. But one more thing I'm going to do before anything else and that is I'm going to um, get a reasonably hard brush pretty small. This bag is almost so square at the bottom. That's just not how a bag sits. So I'm just going to come in here and rub off with white paint just to round this corner just a little teeny bit. I don't have to do this a lot. Actually, I probably don't even need to do it at all. And then when I'm done with that, hit Q. Now I'm going to go say, look, I just there's no reason for me to keep this little scrap of white anymore. It's adding no value to the whole thing. So I'm going to go image, I'm sorry, select, inverse, or command, shift, I. So now it's everything but the bag, and then I'm going to hit delete. So there I go, got my bag. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I need to dupe this, grabbing this and pulling it down to the new layer icon. And I'm just going to mess around so that I know that this one right here is my reflection. And I'm going to go up to... And zero to zoom out a little bit, edit, transform, flip vertical. So the bag's going to be opposite of what it was. Slide it down. I could tap it when it's close. I want it about right there like that. Some of the videos you show, you see about this would have a little bit of a gap. We'll put it so that this is touching, but since I rounded the corner slightly, we'll still leave that. Uh, reflections are almost always blurred. So we could go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Um, no, it needs to be blurred more than that, but it doesn't need to be blurred in the 30s. So yeah, about seven to eight, somewhere in there sounds fine. Click OK. And then what I need to do is click the layer mask down here and just say add a layer mask to that channel. Excellent. And with black in the foreground when I'm working on a layer mask, when I have black there, go get the gradation tool. Make sure that this is set for a linear gradient. Click on this. Pick this one here so it's black to clear. I'm going to come down here at the bottom of the bag and I'm going to draw a line straight up to the top of the bag and let go. And if for some reason I think it made it fade too fast, I could push here and I could pull to about Maybe here, not quite the whole length of the bag. That'll leave a little bit more of it coming down. And you can keep playing until you decide how much you want that to blend out. I'm just going to say that I love that right there. Um, 
Now that I'm done with that, I'm going to move this layer, which is the upside down version, underneath the right side up version. I'm going to make a new layer by coming down to the new layer icon down here, create a new layer, click. I'm going to go get the oval tool, reset this to black ink, and with the oval tool, which is hidden underneath the rectangular marquee tool, I'm going to draw a very thin oval right here, a little bit wider than the bag. I'm going to go up to edit, fill, so it's fill from the foreground color or from black, or I could just be hitting option delete. Command D to deselect it, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, maybe, ooh, 33 is too big. 20 something, sounds good. Click OK. Uh, right now I'm noticing that there's this kind of fringe right here on this um, on the bottom of this bag. So I'm going to go back to the background copy and I'm going to decide that I'm just going to leave it the way that it is. So this looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the layer one background. I'm going to leave everything else, my little black shadow, my normal bag, and my reflection bag. And I'm going to go up to File Save As. And I'm going to leave it as the Photoshop file here, which is going to add the PSD. Uh, call it Reflection, click Save, and I'm done.